Good morning, Dr. Brad. Good morning, Kurt. Um, uh, for the audience, this is a working session. If you don't know what that is, it means it's, it's docu for documentation purposes. Uh, but the uh, if you are one of our the fans or followers or uh, acolytes or whatever we call ourselves <laughs> today that uh, studiously follows the progress, uh, this you might want to watch this. For everybody else, uh, it's sort of like it's watching people work. Um, <clears throat> what's our topic today is because we've just been distracted by the wonderfully by the uh, events of the conference we just held. Yes. There is a conflict between Brad and my working time, which is usually Saturday, Sunday, and the Q&A sessions, which we have to figure out because I can't keep uh, sacrificing Saturday mornings, the Q&As, when Brad and my time is quite important. Um, and before that, I, as you know, I've been quite ill for, uh, with two stages here. And Brad's, thanks to Brad, I'm uh, mostly there now, or else recovered now. Um, so uh, what section we're working on is called the pamphlet. The pamphlet is the outline of all the work. It's a basic summary of the ternary logics and the sciences so that it forms a quick reference guide for the majority of the rules uh, of the ternary logics that are used to explain the universe we live in. Um, <clears throat> the only universe I know of. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Uh, so uh, to do that, though, we recognize that we have built this set of arguments and I have what I have and we have is mostly me, but then over the past two years, it's a lot of it's Brad and I together have rebuilt this argument from the sciences upward instead of from the logics upward or from the ethics outward. And so what we have is a set of uh, arguments or or descriptions of these first principles that are organized in three or four different forms, or in other words, organized somewhat differently in order to emphasize different points. Well, in order to create a universally commensurable language, we're trying to create the most universally commensurable uh, synthesis of all the sciences and put it in the pamphlet. So the pamphlet is organized basically as the front matter, the introduction, uh, the physical laws, the behavioral laws, the evolutionary laws, and the formal or logical laws. That's largely what it co uh, consists of. And that, that is the, that is the uh, and the last one, of course, includes the methodology, et cetera. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an explanation. It should provide most people who have some knowledge of what we do with an accessible uh, quick reference guide and index to the the logic that we've produced. Now, um, the bigger work is, of course, what we call the science. There's three three critical works to what we're doing: um, the pamphlet, the science, and the what we call the constitution or the legal reforms, legal and economic reforms, legal, economic, and social reforms, I guess. And so uh, what we're going to do is take this short version, which is the pamphlet, and essentially make sure that the science is organized by the same may, way with the same basic arguments. And then the science has a lot more detail to it. So um, it covers a, great, a much more uh, much more of psychology, for example. And so we have, uh, I can't remember how, and, and in... I don't remember is the the is I think all the science all the foundational arguments to all the moral decidabilities are in the science too. Is that correct? Or is it in the law? I don't know the answer to that one. I don't know the answer to that one either. Um give me one second. Uh, I can't remember where they are. In, in my mind, they're in the science, but uh, it sounds like they're they should be in the law. 
so uh, what I'm really getting at is those are much bigger works. And for uh, and given the way time and the Overton window was working, we felt that uh, Brad felt <laughs> Brad felt correctly <laughs> and persuaded me correctly that we needed to work on the pamphlet to get the outline out there faster, because that's really the summary of it. In fact, if you have the outline in the Constitution, that's really the summary of the work. Even the Constitution, if you look at the first few articles of the Constitution, they're basically a repeat of a repeat of the um, of the pamphlet, right? I mean, that's what they are. So um, we could, of course, uh, take longer to produce the. I'm, I'm I'm not recommending this. We could, for for example, take longer and just simply include the pamphlet in the Constitution, and then use the pamphlet to ensure the outline of the science matches the outline we've produced with the pamphlet. We could just do those two things. Um, uh, but the problem we face is we know we can complete the pamphlet in a reasonable amount of time. And um, because we actually, ha we have all the information, we're just trying to make it a, a consistent, solid argument from the same point of view. We could do that. Um, uh, we could we, we and we could do without the pamphlet. The thing is, the pamphlet turns out to be the optimum outline for uh, for organizing the rest of the works. As you know, we've also got a book that states this in terms of philosophy. We also have a book that states the history of the evolution of our civilization and why it is what it is. And we have um, a book called the uh, Prosecution, which if we need to pr produce, we'll produce which explains the crimes of the opposition and, and its war against our civilization from within. So we have a, and we also have the European, the European law, which is a sort of, uh, it would, it presents our Lex Lo Le Legis Europa, which uh, re represents the Western civilization in terms much closer to uh, scriptural narrative or historical narrative um to be so that it's wild widely accessible to a large number of people for a long period of time and which one am i missing and we have uh s something on religion planned which brad and i will figure we'll be doddering old oh doddering, my doddering <laughs> and we get that one done because it turns out to be the 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 uh, what we call religion is turns out to be the hard problem it's the hardest form of education to produce, but it might in fact be the most important education to produce. So uh, it, while it's, uh, uh, and which is a fascinating study in itself. So today uh, we're gonna try to do, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share my screen and show you what we're trying to accomplish. Um, share screen, share screen, I'm gonna show. What, how did you do that? There we go. Um, desktop one, or I think it's this one. Summary of the ternary logic. Is that what you're seeing on the screen? No, I'm not seeing one. anything. I'm going to share that one and see if that, that does it. And you're not recording this on Read AI. No, I'm not. Am I recording this at all? Did I just give Yes, it's recording. It's recording. Are you sure? Because I don't see it. Hang on. It was a second ago. Before you shared, it looked like it was recording. Look on your, um, on the bottom. Sorry, brother. Okay, it said stop recording. So it's recording. Pause and stop. Okay, so it is recording. Okay. So if I gave that little introduction and, and it was a waste of time, I was going to be unhappy. It irritable. All right. So um, what I want to show is first that this uh, right here is the outline of the pamphlet. Right. And we have a few pieces here, which is the source material for it, the summary ternary of the ternary logic, the outline of the draft. Right. We have all those pieces and they're broken out here as um, the the. Um, excuse me, the um, front matter, which is what this is, 
uh, the, no, excuse me, the title page, the front matter, uh, the introduction, the physical laws, uh, the behavioral laws, um, the evolutionary laws, the formal laws, which is the logics and the back matter. So what we've broken out is each chapter because these were getting quite long. What we're trying to do is take these first few, again, the behavioral law, what happened? History, accident, there's, this touchpad is kind of, this enormous touchpad I have over here on, to, to my, on my hand. And uh, sometimes if I am too lazy with my middle finger, I mean, I'm not, I should exercise it more. <laughs> but if I'm, I'm too lazy with my middle finger, it ends up closing, accidentally closing a tab. So uh, we're trying to work with the uh, behavioral laws right today. And we need to bring together um, what we call the summary of the ternary logic. The, uh, come on, come on, you can do it. Um, the uh, pamphlet source material, uh, which is basically a duplicate of this thing down here, and the constitution of which covers man. And as you'll see, these there's none of these is a complete narrative, right? Each of them, each of them address a different priority. So the problem I've had, especially was since I was ill, is I couldn't hold all these pieces in my in my head and uh, and organize them, uh, I get I got tired way too quickly. So um, what we're hoping to do, uh, the, the two of us today, or that's this is our current goal, is is since the behavioral laws are the things that most uh, uh, determine the the questions of the age that are stressful to us, like why, how human behavior. This is the sort of most important section, uh, the behavioral laws. And unfortunately, uh, it's also the most difficult. I had thought that when we were working on the, um, the, the lying, right, working on lying, truth and lying, in other words, uh, fundamental rights, obligations, and alienation, to work with Martin and uh, Brandon, I thought that was really, really hard. Um, it was hard because we had to come up, we had to make sure that we had a strict logical structure and we had to come up with everything. This is different. <laughs> this is, we have three logical structures. We have to figure out how to articulate them as one uh, evolutionary structure from first principles upward. And we uh, we have to bring together disparate pieces. And what I was hoping to do with that was avoid the problem of just writing it all from scratch and then looking to each of these other chapters or these other documents for what we had missed. Right. Uh, I actually don't know which way we're going to end up doing this. My desire would be to try to just copy paste things in until we've discovered we, we've covered everything. And then once that's the case, try to uh, explain it all. Uh, in other words, go through and edit it. That's that's how I would that's how I would feel most comfortable knowing we had got it right. Uh, the problem is that might that that what that does, is that puts a constraint on how we structure the narrative. There's gonna be a lot of editing basically. So uh, uh, I have, and I haven't felt able, cognitively able to really do this since I got ill last time. So, which has been a while. So um, anyway, so now I feel like we're able and that's what we're gonna to try to do. If I sort of laid out this spread well yep. enough, all right. So this is our target, this, this page, right? Behavioral law. Um, uh, we've sketched out a few ideas about how this ought to outline. And we have to go back and say, 
what is in man, what is in um, uh, what is in the this is the one we've what is in this uh, this this one this goes into pretty good detail um is, is wait, which one is this one Oh, this is the work we already did. And then uh, we have this one, which gets into, which starts with the logics and then goes through cooperation, etc. And we have um, our current work plate. So that's already over there. So I don't have to worry about that one. I only have to worry about these four. All right. So um, what I thought we would do was quickly outline what we have here. Let's just to get it in our heads, right? Outline what we have in this particular case. We essentially started with um, uh, time, neural economy, behavioral. We're trying to work our way up through the scale of cooperation beginning with time, right? And um, we've only sketched some of this, the neural economy, right? And then we got to acquisition. And then we said man acquires. I think what we should do is man must acquire, right? Life must acquire, right? Man must acquire. And then man acquires using all these issues of time, he uses his faculties, he's limited by certain abilities, and this results in a behavioral economy. That behavioral economy uh, results in the utility of cooperation and why man cooperates, then the limits of cooperation and the biases in cooperation. Then we get into re re reproductive differences in cooperation and personality and moral and political biases. And then we get up to the uh, the the three uh, the three cases of in other words. Then we say, okay, now we've said what are the biases, what are the limits, and this is the three methods of it the, of coop of uh, of the ternary logic of cooperation. Um, and then we start um, moving upward into the exercise of the three forces. So until, where are we? Up to here, we have a bias. God damn it. What do you see when I hit that? Just a black screen or what? No, it, it didn't show anything. It just, it, you cursed and that was- I get a black screen and a login prompt. Um, okay. So up into here, yeah. this is um, bias, right? And down here, um, uh, how do I do that one, this one? All right. Why is that doing that? Incentive. A three means of coercion. Okay. Right. So this is personal. This is personal. And this is interpersonal. Right. So yeah. that's what's going on there. So <clears throat> uh, what we didn't do well here is talk about the ternary logic of these things, or did we? Yes, we did, right? We did talk about it, all right? Mm -hmm. Then um, from there, we just go up the scale of how man organizes. We don't have all the institutions, right? Man organizes institutions. Yeah, I didn't cover like family and all that other stuff. That should probably be in there. Then he forms polities and the institutions create path dependence. So a lot of what we need to write is here, right? Yeah. Right, right. 
So I don't feel like, and it's and it's in ternary form. Yes. Right. A lot of it. All right. At least through group evolutionary strategy. All right. So when I when if we have that in mind, we now need to look at the other sources. Um, Which one is this one? What is this one? This is the same, right? So we don't need this. Don't need that one. And then We need this one. And we need, which one is this one? Yeah, this one, this, this one here. Wires, it's got all that in it, right? Man cooperates to grease, decrease the cost of acquisition. There it is. Behavior, ternary logic. I just want to make sure that those two things are the same. Yes, they are. Okay, that's okay, fine. Is that there through certainty? Hmm. There it is. Okay, it's just a formatting issue that's throwing me off. Do we get this table? Or second, third, do we get that? Work or fails foundation. Yeah, we get that. Okay, so this seems to be okay. This seems to be okay, right? It looks like we're okay with this one, All right? That's that's the that that one's correct. So what are we working with here? This one and man. I just close this so I don't get my side. I just keep it simple. That helps. All right. So well, if I haven't made you crazy with my scrolling already. Not crazier than necessary. I have to think about what that would just meant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that... How many times you love working with you lately? Uh, you did. Thanks. So the um, path dependence, right? Yeah. It it it, it translates into um, hyphen pathy. Oh, that's brilliant. There you have it. I'm having a field day with the AI community thinking they're so smart when it, everything they find so so fascinating at each each step of their evolution of this AI is like as obvious I mean it's like crayon level if you understand how the brain works it they're, they're working they're working at crayon level and and us uh, and pretending like it's some great big fucking genius insider innovation oh. and meanwhile 
it's like, well, it's deterministic that you have to do these things and processing power will go up accordingly and whatever. But the real issue is that I, I don't, I wonder if people understand that Bayesian accounting, which is all this is, right? It's just, um, it's just more categ human ability to categorize yeah. is just limited, right? I mean, the, all the complex stuff we do is by intuition. Right. And so you're watching these guys do this stuff. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's just Bayesian accounting. You're just brute forcing this thing through. It's kind of brilliant that brute forcing works. I right. mean, right. But but other than that, I mean, this is 1950s technology. You can't say that because it's so insulting. <laughs> but um, but it's just it, bigger. It's bigger. What? It's just bigger. Well, I mean, and these guys are also young, ex except for a couple like Henderson, whatever it is. Um, you know, these guys are most of them are young, and so they they haven't been through the three previous AI winters. It, oh, each okay. time we found out it was just a hardware problem, and this one, I mean, it's still you know the the fundamental issue today is still hardware, which is so expensive, right? Uh, though the costs are coming down. Anyway, I just find it somewhat humorous. Um, so what we're what we need to do is we need we we have got we've tried a bit of an outline here, um, and it's a, sort of okay from man acquires on up. Okay. What I thought we would do is pick one of these, um, and uh, and work through the principles here, and see how. We need to organize the art, what we're saying. Does that make sense? Sure. So we've narrowed it down to really two documents we have to stress over. Might be a third one, which is from philosophy, but let's worry about stressing over these two. Okay. Um, my gut is that this one is better to start with because I did this with quite a bit of rigor right so right. if we look at the the constitution right the it's actually a ref declaration of reformation right instead of independence reformation yeah. um, um the declaration the act of reformation the preamble and then we get out of the laws of nature which we talk about what they are and then we have the laws of nature of man of language and of law Language is really logic, right? I mean, this, but in the context context of legal writing, it's better to frame it as law as language um, and the natural law. So in this, we are we are capturing the same principles we are in the pamphlet, except we're writing them in the context of constraining, you know, writing definitions that constrain legal action. In complex terms, in simple terms, we're simply writing definitions so they can't be screwed with. In other words, we're describing measurements. Right. right. <clears throat> now, okay, so maybe I'll do it that way. Let's do it that way. Come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. Mm. Yay. Can you see those? But yeah. these, what, what, what am I highlighting? The law pamphlet section heading. What, what am I highlighting right now? That's a trick question. There's nothing highlighted. Okay, I got to switch this over. Share. Window. Stop share. More. Share screen. And I'll do the desktop. Now, what do you see? Action during. Thank you. All right. So let's just simplify it down. This is what we're going to work with is these two documents. Okay. Right? We're going to start with man. We're trying to bring it up. Okay. So uh, we started with, in this one, we start with, Man demonstrates, hmm. right? 
And so we go to agency. I don't think that should be first. Right? I think it's great in the law. And then we go to action and then to acquisition. And here we go from neural economy to action. You know, it's like this interesting function that is um, kind of goes like this. There's a, an imperative to acquire. Okay. And everything follows from the, uh, imper that imperative. So man acts and demonstrates by in acquisition. Oh, the imperative. You you showed it, you highlighted that earlier um, in Man Acquires was the, uh, that was it, was that highlighted? There it is. <clears throat> and that's the that's the origin of the function because life is it, it has an acquisitional impulse that is um imperative so that's up in here But is it goes to back to it stems from biological economy is there right i'm just trying to figure out where to put where to put the assertion because that's the first principle right life requires acquisition acquisition So it goes down in here. So we need, I don't think scarcity. Which is, this is economics, right? It's time scarcity. Time scarcity um, imperative. imperative all right yeah acquire or die <laughs> is it dependency why is why is this right this is this comes later that's what i think <laughs> what the hell's going on here uh, looks like you copied it and disappeared it. Let it redo. Let it redo. Let it redo. Oh, fucking A. What did I just write there? Imperative. Yeah. Imperative. What was it? Acquire or die. Is it a C? Yeah. Yep. And that that precedes um nervous systems, which is good. You've got it in the right order. Yeah, I think that. Uh... Where Scott, we've got a physical and the 
do we need to separate physical and life? Yeah, I think so. Well, I think I don't know because it's like the the you could um we could uh, I have this discourse with you shortly, which is the 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 general premise of each level of complexity is acquire or die, which is capitalization sufficient to move to the next level of complexity. Right. All right, and then we have, this is life, right? Right. There's no imperative for the physical world to. Well, let's persist. Okay. I like covering. Right, that's that's, that's homeostasis or stable relations. What's the difference in homeostasis and stable relations? The same. So, so, so. I would just write them both there because it's like uh, it 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 makes a tie the the cognitive tie hard between them. Well, okay, we could do it like this. Yeah, it should be indented or something under persistence, right? Give me, give me a second. Um... Homeostasis. There. Let's just do it that way. That's the same thing. Yeah. I think this comes first. Um, in what section? Well, Neural economy. Yeah. This, that's how you defeat time, right? Scarcity. Yeah, it's how, yeah, it's how you cons conserve in that function in the time um, acquisitional entropic function. So you have acquisition and you have entropy in uh, equilibrium in a uh, time, right? versus right right uh, yeah and it, it, it in it establishing in it, it equilibrium in time so you're saying yeah so there's a ternary logic there I just want to kiss you. So nice. Hmm? You're so nice. I thought I was a dick. A lot of people tell me I'm a dick. I try to keep that from you. <laughs> Time is a neutral function 
and the independence of entropy, right? So we don't have to, right? T time is only relative because of entropy. So there's no sign here, right? There's no sign. There's no sign. But that's just the denominator, right? The uh, momentary function. The entropy in time versus acquisition in time producing equilibrium in time. Yeah, it's all it's the denominator across all of them. All right. But we have to we action is different from movement. What distinguish between them for me? Well, um, uh, you can have action independent of stimuli. You can have reaction in response to stimuli. And you can have action because of prediction of stimuli. So you have, um, it's uh, random. Random move motion. Uh, reactive. Well, this is all neural. Yeah. You have that. Oh. So that's what action means. Is this in the context of a nervous system? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I don't think it is. Oh, no, I mean, uh, it's you have to have a nervous system to do any of this. Right? So you have a nervous system. We haven't uh, put that in there yet. Yep. Which is, uh... Right. Fire. Persistence seems to be more important than scarcity is there. Nervous system improves discount on scarcity. Right, that's the purpose of your nervous system. Which is interesting because it's homeostasis in an environment. If you look at the, the cell has homeostasis within the cell and then the 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 development of the nervous system allows you to improve your homeostasis in the environment outside the cell. We have an issue there, right? We have to include that homeostasis, right? So this requires some stable relations. Maybe it's called homeostasis. order the 
it all just happened. So this is the problem here, right? Yeah. This is demand. This is um, emulation. Your supply, right? And so this is the right, and this is a reflection of yeah. It's like the um, I want to see that persistence uh, indented or something. Yeah, I, I was going to say, is, <laughs> I think you were right about persistence being indented. Or is it not true? How so? And it's, it, it's like the um, persistent requires a stable relation be greater than zero. Right. So it's like a product of stable relations. Well, why isn't... Because the, the entropy is the demand. Is it? I think it's a. Okay. Entropy causes demand for persistence. Or what causes demand? Is there, why is there demand for persistence? It's, it's accidental. accidental. It's accidental. Versus it's, a, it's a product of the stable relations. And so it's entropy versus persistence versus. I would say entropy versus accumulation yielding stable relations yielding persistence. And then I would eliminate the um, demand cost part because it's like it just has a. Uh, I think you're persisting as long as you're equal. I'm not seeing because entropy does um, one second. I need to do the same here. Space. Converse to space.
entropy no that's how it equilibrates that's how it equilibrates entropy expansion space Is that a kind of persistence? I don't know, now we're getting, move back down to here, what you were saying. So there's a, de the demand is, um is, it, it, see, I look at the entropy of the Red Queen. So you get you have accumulation and you have demand, which is uh it does it doesn't matter how you name it to honestly. Well, at the top level, we have pressure that can be released by either expansion or concentration. Right. All right. So we either get space or we get mass. Okay. Um, it turns out that for the universe, space is pretty easy. Yeah. Max is accidental. Max is no mass is noise. Okay. So we have pressure. There you go. Okay, so there. But, but. Pressure can result in entropy, which is expansion of space or concentration of matter. So we call that process entropy, which. Right, and we have accumulation, which is produces right. And that's is that how it works? It's close. So it's distribution in space, right? Entropy is expansion and distribution in space. And it's concentration. Versus concentration. Uh-huh. Is that what should be here? Yeah. By accumulation. Oh, I see. You know, when you realize, I wonder if it, what people look like, it sounds to people we're doing, they don't all recognize that we're just saying there's a turn to real relation and what is it? Right. Right. I mean, we're just trying to find it, figure we're out. Trying to find it. Uh, um, so you have entropy. So you have concentration, then, which is plus, right? Yes. And then you have accumulation, which is plus, plus. And you have into a stable relation. That's the demand. The stable relations are the demand. And this creates a stable relation.
right? Right. Or is it the other way around? In other words, what's first here? Space or space? Okay, space shouldn't even be in there because you the 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 it's all in space. That's the common denominator in uh, well, expansion no, no, versus no. concentration. Space, space is made by expansion. That's where space comes from. There's no space independent of the universe expanding. Okay. So uh, my question is the uh, opposite, whether expansion into space produces a stable relation or expansion produces a stable relation that produces space. But think about it as there's two functions here. There's expansion and concentration, right? Right. Oh, so you want to talk about, well, well now we're confusing two things. I see. We got a terminal terminology problem. Okay. Oh. We have entropy or concentration. Entropy. It's like a dissipation, you know? Right, expansion. Name for the name for expansion of and dissipation is is uh, the name for expansion and dissipation is entropy. Mm -hmm. So we go from entropy produces expansion, produces stable relations, the result of space. We go from concentration, produces accumulation, produces stable mm -hmm. relations that result in mass. Is that right? No. I, I don't know how it's not right. which is the, the options are concentration or expansion well, this is actually dissipation let's hide that the place There you go. So it, it's the stable relations are the equilibration between those two. Okay. So if you, the second line that says stable relations, et cetera, should be the third uh, function because there, there you have entropy and concentration generating stable relations. You want me to, which ones do you want me to reverse space? So be the third line in each one of those is stable relations. That's what I figured. And then pull that down so that it's the it's it's entropy versus concentration generating stable relations as the outcome of the 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 third as the third function. So you have a the entropy is minus, the stable relations is the equilibration. 
Yes. This is the equilibration. Oh my gosh, I don't want to have any. Um, this is. Expansion is part of space, yeah? Well, mass is part of, I mean, it's the same thing. I don't understand. Space is the denominator within which both are, are functioning. No, expansion creates space. Space is a thing. So I under, no, I understand, but it's like the, the issue that I have is like dissipation or expansion and accumulation and concentration occur in space. Generating stable relations by those means of expansion versus concentration. Yeah, I know you're seeing something and I'm not I'm not able right. to grasp it yet. So I'm just trying to try it on for size, right? Well that's all right. Try it on for size. No, I, I'm just not catching that. Um you're seeing something. What I what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at simple physics. There yep. is for some reason something you know god knows supermassive black holes whatever that at some point um there's a, a an explosive reaction that converts that density into disorder again so that creates big bangs or something of that nature the result is a majority of the energy can't be organized and as such results in simply space. And some subset of that energy uh, can be organized and results in concentration into um, mass. Right. And, and I'm overusing mass here because obviously some particles have almost no mass. Right, right. No mass. Um, so, uh, I when I look at this, if I if I do what you suggested here, which I we say the result is a stable relation, right? I think that's correct. And I'm trying, and I'm my intuition could be that I'm anticipating you making an error you're not making. In other words, it's possible, <laughs> right? Um, and what I'm, what I'm, what I, my intuition tells me that you're not considering space, the same space as just a different form of mass, right? Like a liquid. Space. Is I space. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Basically, a liquid, right? Ground mass. Right. And um, uh, and it doesn't have mass because it doesn't have resistance. The liquid doesn't have much resistance other than the speed of light problem. And um, the speed of light problem is a is a function of the fact that this background liquid or whatever you want to call it, the quantum background, um, uh, has a minimum density or a zero point. And yes. As such, inferent things can only transfer through it at certain, just like water can only transfer it at certain velocities, and that mass is really the a measure of the friction, right? Uh, and the friction, the friction created by the density of information passing through that liquid. So, I mean, that's the best way. I mean, it's the that's right. Still version. So. Um, So I think, I think we have it here. So we gain in front, we gain energy. So, so okay. So then in the prop, the pro, the pro function of it is accumulation is a surplus of of information in space beyond the ability to be dissipated by Correct. space. 
think of it, it's really think of it as whirlpools. Yeah. Right. So um, it's all this pressure, and this energy bumps into each other, and it turns out if it spins fast enough, spin being a yep. a, a the the best frame humans have to describe what probably is looks like an elect a, a bundle of electrical storms. Yeah. But, um, spinning fast enough, then um, the it, it concentrates that energy and equilibrates with the space around it, right? So that that's really what ha happens. Um, and so it's not all that uh, difficult, but you are accumulating energy this way, or we're dissipating energy that way, and right. that's it. Just. Right. So this is where I see that the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is this entropy function, which is dissipation versus the concentration yields the equilibrium for both. So that, I think that was right. Say that again. The entropic function is dissipation in space. Yep. And the concentration function function is capitalization in space at an equilibrium that's generative of stable relations. Okay, I want to capture that. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the ternary logic exists between the entropy versus the negative entropy generative of the stable relations, which is the equilibrium between the two functions, which are yeah. simultaneous. The problem is I just want you to restate it again because I can't do it off the top of my head. Okay. Shall I go? Yeah. So the entropy is dissipative versus concentration, negative entropy. Yields the stable relations. Okay. Now, how do how much explanation do we got to do here? That's enough. You don't think we got? No, like I, I don't. the 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 fact that it's used this line that you have on the bottom of both of them, stable relations, is the same line. Pressure. Okay. I see. I see. I see. I see. Pressure operates in space with entropy and negative entropy, yes. yielding the stable relations. Is there anything else I got to say there? No. All right. So, so what I was thinking was this. Okay. So the problem is is I'm not, is this backwards? In, in other words, are these two in opposition? In other words, results in stable relations that result in back, in persistence. Oh, oh. So it result in stable relations. Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, is it is it true though? It stabilizes the relations via generation of space or stabilizes the relations via generation in mass. Yeah, so let's reverse it.
Well, that's very interesting. Change the signs a little bit. <clears throat> People wonder why it takes us so long to do this show. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. <laughs> Because they don't realize it's just math, right? I mean, the problem is there's no numbers to refer to. That's right. It's hard math. So the space is the equilibrium, and the the stable relations are the minus. So what we're doing is defining the function of entropy there. Yes. So that, that shouldn't have a minus, but or maybe it does keep a minus, but it's it should be in two two parentheticals instead of one so that there's no confusion with the other ones. So if you if you get entropy dissipation, put two parentheses around the minus because you're defining the minus with the ternary logic there. Not the that one, the other one. The other one? The one on top. What do you want me to do? Put two parentheses around it. Okay, so you see this, and then put two parentheses around concentration plus. Oh, I see. You know, you're smarter than you look. I can know. It's a good thing, isn't it? It's just amazing. <laughs> All right, so let you had you had phrased so, this better. So it goes like this. You're almost there. You're almost there. You you, you stated this word differently. Something in here. You you freight your ang your anglicization of this you know <laughs> it it was correct and I didn't write it down okay there's concentration we already got that you got capital yeah but you said. Negative entropy by accumulation results in stable relations. That, that should be results in that results in that result. Gener generates, yep, yeah, generates mass. Generates. Yeah, generates of persistence. Yeah, or something like that. that's what I, I said. think. Results is results it's good enough. It's good enough. Yeah. But so that should be the equal sign, though. Yep. Yeah. I guess I should have gotten that across to Martin. Is that when I know when we find this formula, we yeah. know we're right. And he's always pushing back on me because he doesn't. He thinks they're confusing, and I'm like, I. I he's just I mistaken. He's just. I'm afraid to tell Martin he's mistaken. <laughs> I, 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 we're we recording don't this. We don't know what we result. That was me who said it. So you're not. Responding. I'm. A, I'm. I'm free. I get a free pass on this one. What am I? I'm arguing with him about authority right now. And I know I've had this problem with Russians too. Uh oh. There's just some, there's some concept of authority in the Eastern European mind that is not, that, that misinterprets the Western use of the term. And when we say you have authority, it means it's your fucking job. Right. Uh, in other words, it's, it's, your, it's your responsibility. Somebody, yeah, responsibility. Right. Uh, the, it, it, when, and in particular, some organization has embowed you with responsibility for this particular function. So, so my argument is uh, authority in the West doesn't really exist. There's no, there's no, uh, it's not necessarily authorship. It's responsibility. Because responsibility is a negativa, right? And, and authorship's a positiva, right? Responsibility is limited to what you're responsible to do, right. whereas authority is a different issue. And so we're, we're having fun over this one. And uh, to some degree, I keep I like to keep these little arguments with Martin going. Right. Because they're so fun. <laughs> Just saying, right? Yes. Um, All right. So in a sense, uh, the way uh, there's two interpretations of the word uh, authority. One is legitimacy. 
Yes. Right. And one is power. Right. right. And the problem is we have a prohibition on the power version in the West. We don't have a prohibition on the responsibility right. uh, ver version of it, a uh, legitimacy version of it. And so, uh, whereas, so I just, it's like, I've got to, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can play with this one because you never know, right? I, I, this is part of, like, again, you know, understand this about working with me, but I'm like, if I don't know for certain, I don't know. That's fair enough. Right. And so I'll argue this thing until I know for certain one way or the other. You'll figure it out. Uh, I have confidence in you. I, you're just saying that because. <laughs> I did just say that. Yeah. Confidence in The man who is the, you're going to get it like the, you're, you're, you're the, like the patron saint of patience with hopeless causes. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. This water on a rock. That's it. Um well you're the same when you know you're right you just stick to it, right? I mean. Okay. So I don't know I think the the uh, the universe is under pressure. There's obviously pressure. So we don't actually know why. It's just an unknown cause. So it's not verses that that first verses is not correct. Where are you? Below what you just wrote. Next line down, verses. Yes, I know. You're always ahead of me. Like... You're you're always a step ahead of me, and Brandon's always three paragraphs ahead of me. Oh my! I've got to I got to get to work. All right. So uh, the universe under pressure. Why pressure? There you go. There you go. That's right. Next person tells us that gives me crap about how long it takes. I'm going to just say, here, go watch this fucking video. <laughs> you can watch this speed of thought. <laughs> yeah, then you have the wise ass that comes along and says, well, I knew that. No, no you didn't. You had an intuition that was something close to this. That's right. But you didn't write it down. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. Wait, there's a there's a formatting error here. So you have entropy mm -hmm. with a space after a line after it, and and uh, concentration does not have that line. Oh, that turned dark. Come on, there we go. Where where to go? Entropy it goes here, right? Yeah. There you go. I want to get rid of a space here. I know you do. I'm going to do this. Oh, it's not enough. It's not enough. I might have to do something else, Brad. You get drastic. Yeah, I, did, I did it again. That finger. Okay. 
You don't need one more? No, I think you got it. Got it. There we go. Now we have to say it about life. Or do we have to say time? Uh, this is not supposed to be time. Time is a competition. Time is the rate of change. Measured by the expansion. Time is the... Okay, this is a really hard one. Or is time after entropy? Time is the, is the way we measure positive and negative entropy. Yeah. It's the rate, it's the, it's the denominator, right? Mm -hmm. I can move, do I move all this outward one? This is like, you know, prime. Hmm. What do we call them? Constant hey. relations? Stable relations? Yeah. What was what did you mean by bullet listed um, list of economies? I think I was trying to show recommend that we show here, which I think is early. The um, how different economies, how the hierarchy of economies or what we call systems or the hierarchy of stable relations or grammars solve the problem of time. Is time uh, entropy is dominant? Um, did you know, you know, Hawking radiation has a limit. So we thought 
black holes would eventually evaporate, but it turns out not. That was an error? I think so. I think that's the error. And I think that it's the only thing we know of. <laughs> There's only two things that make any sense. <laughs> uh, you know, in the, <laughs> all right. My, my error in using convenient language. It makes sense that some black holes will become large enough to right. become the major force in the universe, right? Okay. And there is a, likely a limit to the pressure of expansion, the release of pressure into expansion before collapse. Okay. But that's so we just don't know those things. Right. So it could be that heat death is like the real way the universe ends. I, I kind of doubt it. Um or it could be that um we just get to a point where there's not enough pressure remaining to maintain the coherence of space or black holes okay there's no theoretical limit as far as i know to the size of black holes and some of them are fucking scary right I mean, on i mean they're 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 so big it's on a you know there's, there's just no way to even imagine i mean we think the sun is big and <laughs> the solar system is big and the galaxy but some of these black holes are you know i mean they're they're in, and the universe isn't that old yet. I mean, so what am I trying to get across here? A entropy is dominant as far as we know. So time. I'm going to ask. Oh, I'm going to ask. What's its name to help? Oh, me. there you go. Help me with this. Oh, the heck with you. That's weird. The, well, I mean, that? my application might do the same thing. So I'm sort of like, I understand these authorization challenges. Yeah, that's correct. Time is in really the yeah, well, I'm saying the same fucking thing. It's just Yeah, okay. It doesn't like the way I phrased that. Of change because of entropy. Okay. Change of state. State.
So the argument here is, is go ahead a zero point two one. Ooh, like that. Like philosophers need to go to hell. Yeah, there's a there's no zero point. Yeah, there is. There's a zero point to the background. There has to be a zero point to time at least within the temperature and pressure of a given unit of space. So we know there's a zero point to the quantum background everywhere we can possibly measure. What we don't know is, for example, let's say as we approach the edge of the expanding universe, if that uh, if that zero point remains the same. We do know that things like black holes take make this unquantifiable. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with this as close enough. Close enough. So, stable relations is information, right? Well, well, technically everything's information, but I think as you mean it, a stable relation would be good information. You know, yes. Okay. All right. I mean, is there any information to chaos? Well, technically speaking, uh, yes. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Now. Can we jump to life? Have we created the foundations? Yeah. The um That's good. That's very interesting. Really, the relative rate of change. Yep. I mean, if there's, even if there's zero, I mean, we can't get to true zero 
temperature and pressure that we know of. So there's no conditions. Not I can't, um, that we we couldn't measure it. Right. All right, um, I'm getting hungry, so I need to eat something. All right. Uh, are we done for the day? Um, yeah, or do you want to do you want to continue in a, in, a, in a while? Up to you, brother. I don't have any. Press on. I can press on. I got till uh, for now about ninety minutes, eighty minutes. You got to go ride horses today, don't you? The um, judge is going to call me up here in about ninety minutes. I can't tell if I'm going to be useful or not, Brad. It's all right. So we just uh, um, just call me up or have a bite and decide right. what you want to do. And either way is fine with me. Thank you. This was great, though. It's like another example of we write a page. But we are making progress. That's what counts. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, and I'm and I feel there, which is really wonderful. All right. So I this is I'm happy. All right. If I got, if I'm going to have something to eat and give it 15 or 20 minutes, I'll let you know if I can, if I think I got juice left. All right. Good. Thank you for the work today, Brad. As always, really enjoyable. Pleasure.